Now, Ruslan KD is a very famous Christian, what would you call him? YouTuber. And he, you know, I like him. I, I like his, uh, he does interviews, he does commentary, which this is a kind of commentary, so I'm kind of copying him a little bit. And he's got a new, a new video out, and it's about an article from Cosmopolitan which gets into satanic abortions. Yes, satanic abortions. And so you can go and you can do, at a clinic, a satanic abortion, which is going through, well, let's just, let's just take a look at it. So my background is one from the actual background on Cosmopolitan. And you can go there and you can have an abortion in New Mexico. Now, what are they doing in New Mexico? Uh, Cosmopolitan has, has latched onto this and, and on, their, on the cover of their magazine, they say, the devil's in the, of course, they want to say the devil's in the details. And then they go on to say, health clinic? <laughs> Abortions, health clinic. Yeah, no, nah, it's not really the same thing. And this is a Cosmopolitan special report. And, you know, they give, they give this a lot of press. And, of course, they're not going to say, oh, it's really terrible. And is it? no, 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 no. They're just going to say, look, look what we found. We're, we're really this interesting. And it is quite satanic. So Ruslan KD has found Satanists being satanic. And that is where I want to go with this video. But let, first, let's see what he, he's talking about. So they describe this thing, I think it's in New Mexico, and they actually go through some sort of incantations, you know, satanic stuff. And they say, first find a quiet space. <laughs> They've got a little upside down cross. So we know these are Satanists. You don't want to, we wouldn't want to confuse them with anyone else. Bring a mirror if you can. So maybe you can break it over your head or scare off a vampire. Just before taking the medication for the abortion, gaze at your reflection and focus on your personhood. Home in on your intent, your responsibility to you. can't make it up. You can't make it up. <sighs> they, go, they go on to say, take a few deep, relaxing breaths. <laughs> That's something I need about right now. When you're ready, because you know it's about you, when you're ready, read the following tenet aloud. Now, a tenet is, you know, some, some worthy, axiomatic piece of wisdom. We're going to read this worthy, axiomatic piece of wisdom out loud. One's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. Except when uh, you had that, you know, one night fling with that guy who apparently violated your body. Take the medication and immediately afterward recite, beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. Oh no, we wouldn't want anything like that. I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to let our beliefs get in the way of the last scientific insight on the morality of abortion. I think John Lennox said, I think he was quoting someone else. It may have been Einstein. He said, you can talk about the, the moral foundations of science, but you can't talk about the scientific foundations of morality. Anyway, maybe we should send that to these Satanists. So you, you get where he's coming from. I mean, you know, this is pretty horrifying, satanic, evil, nasty stuff. It, it, it continues. Later, once the procedure, it's just a procedure, it's kind of like having a tooth removed or, you know, a pimple popped. Later, once the procedure is complete, 
return to your reflection because you got to get back to you. Focus again on your personhood, your power in making this decision. Complete the ritual by reciting a personal affirmation. And this personal affirmation should be, by my body, my blood, by my will, it is done. So, you know, this is really rich because it's, it's, it's great. It's real Satanist stuff. You know, it's your blood, not Christ Jesus's blood. And it's your will be done, not the Father's will be done. Ah, so, you know, they're hitting on all cylinders here. Yeah, for, for you know, Satanists. And here are the Satanists really getting behind abortion. <laughs> okay. Shouldn't that tell you something? It would be kind of like, well, actually, that's kind of where we expect them to be, right? I mean, and, and, and if they're behind abortion, you probably don't want anything to do with it, do you? I mean, imagine that, you know, you enjoy eating potato chips. And suddenly, Satanists across the world are saying, You've got to eat potato chips. We've got to eat more potato chips. It's about you and, 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 and it's about getting the potato chips that you need. And uh, doctor now on my 600 pound life. What in the world is going on with you? Is just a purveyor of oppression and fat shaming. And, and wouldn't you kind of think at that point, wait a minute, I do like potato chips, but if the Satanists are you know behind it and pushing it that hard, I guess I'm eating the wrong things. <laughs> Maybe I should switch to Doritos or a banana or something like that. Anyway, Ruslan KD has caught Satanists being satanic. And, and he would say, well, you, well, you know, but I also found this in Cosmopolitan. I mean, this is just a, a women's magazine. No, no, it's a feminist magazine. And feminism is deeply rooted in the horrifying evils of abortion, in destroying the family, and destroying what they would call the patriarchy, or what I would call men's leadership, Christian men's leadership. Now, if you think all of that is just a bunch of bunk, then you haven't read anything about the feminist movement from you know 1904 up to the present day. And that's where it's coming from. So, Actually, if you're reading Cosmo or Vogue or these kind of things, it's wacko feminist nonsense that is basically grounded in the same things that Satanists think are really good things. Well, there's one more bit. Mirror or mantras or not, TST's point is that your abortion should focus on your autonomy in making this decision. Patients can include as many loved ones as they like or light candles or even dress up, whatever makes them feel empowered. I'm thinking again, sort of TLC, you know, the curvy brides. <laughs> these overweight women squeezed into these, you know, you can put on one of these dresses or you can light candles or you can invite other people to your, you know, your ceremony of autonomy and murder. Bring in the grandparents. Oh no, they won't be grandparents. <laughs> it's just horrible. But I think he misses the point. I think, I think the thing that's really newsworthy here is that the Satanists are Satanists. But we see this in the church. Feminism is in the church. I'm not talking about the feminism of, you know, equal, equal, equal work and equal pay and all that kind of stuff. No, that's just legal. <laughs> that's just the law, you know. I'm not talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about real feminism and, and the horrors that it brings. And it's in the church. And abortion is in the church. Here's an article about Trust women. Oh, gosh. And, uh, you know, a progressive Christian's argument for reproductive justice. 
And this is coming out in, you know, in, in Christian circles. Talks about in an age when women's reproductive rights are increasingly under attack, a minister and ethicist offers a stirring argument that abortion can be a moral good. <laughs> that, that murder can be, that adultery can be a moral good. Well, actually they do argue that, that, you know, kind of stepping out on your wife or stepping out on your husband can add a little bit of spice and that can actually save your marriage. A lady on television many years ago was, was being interviewed and there were a bunch of PhDs and they were talking about how you should never physically punish children. And she was listening to this and all these PhDs, they all agreed with each other. And she said, it seems like they've just, ed she was from Texas, so she said, seems like they just educated themselves stupid. <laughs> I thought, yes, you've educated yourself right out of common sense that the rest of us have. And that's what this is right here. Absolutely terrible from Rebecca Todd Peters. Be ashamed of yourself. And, and there are others. Here is uh, uh, Katie Zay. And, you know, she's another feminist, believe women, listen to women, uh, you know, horrible. And, you know, she's writing this article about a, um, you know, abortion clinic in Austin, Texas, which is a, quite a conservative state where, you know, the abortion clinic was blessed. It is not remarkable that Satanists are pushing abortion. This is remarkable. This is the stuff we should be looking at. This is in the church. This is all part and parcel of feminism, neo-Marxism, LGBTQ, uh, the, the, the marriage debates. It is all part of the same thing. Progressive Christians. That's a really bad thing. Satanists are kind of, that's what they do. But we have this kind of Satanism in the church today. And here we are in this abortion clinic in Austin, Texas, and you've got some clearly Protestant and some sort of uh, Catholic maybe, or Anglican, Episcopal, I guess, if it's in the States. Uh, you have Jewish there, and wow, look at that, in all nice little colors, and they're all blessing this abortion clinic because they've educated themselves stupid. And the presiding bishop, the Episcopal or Anglican bishop of the United States, you know, lamented the overturning of Roe versus Wade. It didn't actually get rid of abortions, but it allowed the states to choose if they wanted to have abortion or not. And some of them have said no, and some of them have said yes. And of course, feminists have just lost their mind. And, you know, because they, they can't do their murders, you know. If you look at uh, murder statistics over the years, it's men commit all the murders. It's men mostly, you know, 80% of the, of, the, of the prison population is men because they do violent stuff. Until about 1972, 1973, when abortion started to roll out. And then, you know, you've got, at least in the United States, a million abortions a year. This is women killing a million people a year. But of course it's not put that way, but that's just what it is. And I know there are exceptions. There are exceptions to just general murder. Yeah, and we make exceptions for those. You know, if the guy comes in and he finds his wife with his best friend kind of thing, and you know, he shoots his best friend dead or chokes him to death or something, you know, it's not murder one. It may be manslaughter or something like that, but you know, it's a crime of, of passion. You know, you find this, uh, this terrible thing uh, happening. So, yeah, of course, there are exceptions. Also, in abortion, there are things that any normal people, person would say, oh, you know, a, a, an abortion, well, you know, ne never desirable. It's never desirable to have someone die, uh, but, you know, whatever the extenuating circumstance was. But that isn't what 98% of abortions are about. They're about bowing down to the God of convenience. So back to Ruslan KD, uh, watch his channel. He has some really good stuff and I'm not trying to beat up on him or anything, but I did watch this and I thought, you know, you, you, you've, got the, you've got the wrong end of this in, in, in a way. Of course, it's coming from Cosmopolitan, but I've explained, you know, Cosmopolitan is just, just satanic stuff. This is 
powers and principalities. This is something outside of the gospel and all the stuff outside of the gospel is probably going to be satanic because Satan is the prince of the power of the air and he's in charge of this world right now. The only good thing about that is is that God has opened this space of grace for you and for me, whoever you are, and all you need to do, all you need to do to be with in God's plan to inherit eternal life is to believe in who Jesus Christ was, fully man, fully God. What he did, he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected to pay the debt for your sins, and that by believing on him, you can have eternal life, and you can have direction and purpose and meaning in life that's something that maybe you couldn't have even imagined. And you can get this whether you've had an abortion or not. That doesn't make any difference. Come to Jesus as you are right. I'm a pot smoker. Come to Jesus. I had an abortion. Come to Jesus. And that doesn't matter. But once you've accepted Christ, then it matters. Then you need to be, you know, in this boundary of the gospel and leave all your baggage outside the boundary of the gospel. And join me and many others in trying to follow, as best we can, Jesus Christ. God bless.